Overload can cause hip bursitis and hip pain. The bursa in your hip is a kind of moist cushion between the attachment of tendon and bone. The bursa ensures that you can move your hip joint without friction or abrasion. The more frequently and intensively you burden your hip joint, the greater the risk of hip pain and bursitis. A bursitis in the hip is often caused by incorrect or excessive lifting, pushing, pulling, or working above the power. The risk of overloading is extra large if you have weak muscles, tendons, or ligaments in your hip joint. This can be caused by wear and tear or insufficient physical exercise. The mucus in your hips can also be overloaded if you do heavy physical work such as construction work, tiling, bricklaying, carpentry and the like. So be careful with overloading your hip joints if you want to prevent bursitis in your hips. Bursitis and hip complaints due to incorrect posture. A bursitis in the hips is not necessarily caused by mechanical problems, injuries due to overload, and dynamic problems, injuries caused by wrong movement. A prolonged, unnatural static or silent posture of the hip joint can also lead to bowel inflammation of your hip. Just think of work in which people crouch, bend, or kneel excessively and for a long time, such as streets, tile, or construction work. An incorrect posture or sitting posture can also contribute to a hip bursitis. Just think of a driver who is in an unnatural position behind the wheel all day long. Therefore, always try to adopt a position that is as natural and ergonomic as possible to prevent bursitis. Physiotherapy for treatment of bursitis hip. Physiotherapy, manual therapy, and orthopedics do not or hardly contribute to the healing of bursitis for many people. Therapy can, however, Offer a solution if muscles, tendons, or ligaments in and around your hips are obstructed or blocked. After all, the less hard your muscles have to pull to move your hip, the smaller the chance of a bursitis, source. For example, it can never hurt to call in a physical therapist or manual therapist in case of a bursitis of the hip, if only to tackle indirect impeding factors. The stronger your muscles, tendons, and ligaments, the more the bursa in your hips can endure without getting inflamed. Rest to treat hip pain through a bursitis. In the early stages, bursitis in the hip has a lot of muscle pain. Over time, however, the hip pain becomes increasingly severe. Eventually an intense nagging, radiating pain arises. A hip bursitis is rarely disappears completely. The chance is also great that a bursitis inflammation returns in full force when the hip is again overloaded. It is therefore especially important to give the hip joint sufficient rest with pain in the hip. Do not overdo too much, especially when doing heavy physical work. Try to change your position regularly, especially if you have to work frequently or in a crouched position. In addition, Try to do enough physical exercise to keep your muscles, tendons, and ligaments strong and supple. This also helps to prevent bursitis of the hip and other hip complaints. Medicines with hip pain caused by a hip bursitis. Oral anti-inflammatory drugs such as diclofenac, brand names, cataflam registered trademark and Voltaren registered trademark, usually do not penetrate deep enough to the bursa of the hip to relieve a bursitis. A direct injection with corticosteroid cortisol or hydrocortisone, brand name, Solacortef registered trademark, is usually a lot more effective with hip pain and hip complaints. If treatment with anti-inflammatory drugs and slash or long-term rest does not help, the bursa can be removed surgically. The hip complaints usually disappear completely after a bursa operation. In rare cases, this is not the case or the hip complaints just get worse. A bursa operation or surgical bursa removal is a rather heavy procedure that involves a proper rehabilitation program. The more frequently and intensively you load your hip joint, the greater the chance of a bursitis. Strength training The best way to support all of the joints in your body is to strengthen the muscles that surround them. Daily hip strength training consists of exercises that work all of the muscles of the legs and low back, including the glutes, the hamstrings, the quadriceps, and the quadratus lumborum in the low back. Low lunges, with or without weights, are a great way to activate the strong muscles of the hamstrings and glutes. Side lunges bring in the muscles along the sides of the legs, too. 
Increase the challenge of lunges and other strengthening exercises by adding an exercise band and using it to build strength in the hips in all directions. The legs move forward, back, and from side to side. Likewise, the muscles of the back and core help to keep the hips stable and strong.